Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You are all welcome to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel, to my recent subscribers I want to say a very big thank you, and to those that have been here all along, God bless you. And if this is your first time on this channel, I want to say a very big welcome and thank you for tuning into my video today. Kindly endeavor to click the subscription button and also the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I dropped a new video or come up for prayers. This video you are about to listen to I believe will bless your heart, and help you to come into repentance, and also strengthen your bond with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video, share it to all your friends, contacts and loved ones, God bless you. From the Convent to the Salvation of God Dear brothers and dear friends, we want to share with you the testimony of Françoise Lutala, who signed pacts with Satan from her childhood, and who suffered terribly throughout her youth, until the day when the Lord Jesus Christ had pity on her and delivered her from the Satan's chains. This testimony is in seven parts. This testimony is translated from the French, Du Cuvano Salut de Dieu, from the Convent to the Salvation of God. Introduction Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ and dear readers, may the name of my Savior resonate in you with great intensity, as he grants you to read this document. If he made it possible for you to become acquainted with the message contained in my testimony, it is, I hope, for your edification. There you will find the subject of great exhortations. Only the Lord Jesus Christ has the power to untie and save those who are captive in the chains of the devil, because he is the Almighty and he is love. My name is Lutala Kabe Francoise. Kabe means half in my native language because I am actually a twin. I was born in 1954 in Rwanda to a pastor father at the Church of Christ and a mother member of the Legion of Mary. I am from the Kivu region, in the Shibunda zone. The story you will read is the story of the tragic events that I experienced. Without the intervention of God, I would have been dead long ago. Chapter 1, Under the Influence of Fetishism My parents often used to tell us the stories of our village. Each time, they kept coming back to the exploits of a witch grandmother who lived there. Instead of giving me goosebumps, these stories captivated me. I even went so far as to get some extra information from my friends about wizarding habits. My friends told me what they thought was true about their lives. Given my young age and what my parents had already told me, I kept swallowing all these stories. By dint of thinking too much, I even wanted to become a witch in my turn. But the opportunity was not given to realize my dream, since, in my environment, he does not there was no one who could be suspected of holding such power. My joy was great when, during the summer holidays of 1961, my father took us on leave to the village, to know better the other members of the family. It was an opportunity for me to meet my grandmother. The First Contact Once in Shibunda, my first concern was to meet my grandmother, despite the ban of my parents. This aunt of my father was feared and respected throughout the village because of her occult powers. One day, deceiving my parents' vigilance, I went to find her and I said to her, Grandma, why do not my parents love you, why do you criticize them so much, what did you do for them? That they do this to you? I know they do not like me because I'm a witch. Far from frightening me, this affirmation procured me intense joy. At last, I said to myself, I am in the presence of a real witch. Are you a witch, so show me your plane. How? She said as if she had not understood me. Bewitch me. I cannot bewitch you, there is already another person in the family to whom I must bequeath my powers. Cripple me, at least so I can see the planes. You do not know what you're talking about, do you know that these planes you're talking about are flying only at night? The wizards do not spend their time having fun, contrary to what most people think, they're forced to do what they do, for fear of severe punishment, which may go as far as death. And then, if they did it for pleasure, why do some of them sleep so much during the day? Although true, these words did not alter my desire to become a witch. Besides, the refusal of my grandmother aroused my distrust and reminded me of what one of my friends had told me. She warned me, telling me that wizards might be jealous of seeing certain powers passed on to someone. They can go so far as to discourage a new follower before bewitching him. 
In an attempt to break my grandmother's resistance, I started to cry. Annoyed by my din, she says to me, you're just a little girl, you still have your whole life in front of you, there are many things I can give you, but I cannot introduce you into witchcraft. The laws of our family do not allow me to do it. If you were at least the eldest, or boy, it could have been possible. But, in your condition, I cannot bewitch you. I began to whine, bewitch me, bewitch me. Touched by this staging, the old woman cried, murmuring, we only give a child what he asks for. She added, it's not witchcraft that will make you happy. But go, ask your parents 50 francs, and bring them back to me tomorrow. I will give you something, a power that will be of great use to you. You will not have to work anymore to make a living. All your wishes will be answered. You will not need to worry about getting married anymore because the men will run after you. I did not understand anything she said to me, but I did it. The next day I asked for 50 francs at that time, 50 francs was a huge sum, and my parents agreed to give it to me. Provided that I tell them what I planned to do. There was no question of me revealing my secret to them, lest they try to destroy all my projects with my grandmother. To confuse everything, I pretended to be sick and started to cry. Oddly enough, from the moment I pretended to be sick, I became really sick. My whole body was agitated by a high fever. The neighbors, who ran for the occasion, advised my parents to accept the loss of 50 francs rather than that of their child. The twins are strange beings, said one of them, from their childhood they can submit to anyone who insults them, even if they are inside, just give them a gift to soothe their anger and remedy the situation. Another neighbor added, I know twins who can disappear and reappear, whenever their parents contradict them. Convinced by the neighbors, my parents got scared and gave me the 50 francs. I went to my appointment not without having pretended to play, to deceive the vigilance. Once at my grandmother's, I gave her the money. While waiting for my arrival, she had already prepared a chicken, in a pot that was still on the fire. She was only waiting for my arrival to bring in two sheets of I do not know which tree, plus the 50 francs I had brought. When the dish was cooked, she extracted the money and gave it back to me. I saw no trace of the two leaves. At the question of knowing what had become of these two leaves, she replied that they were not leaves and that there was now a power in me. That power had come into me while she was preparing the dish. What is power and what use will it be to me? She gave me the same speech as before, anyone can give you anything you ask. You will not need to get married. You'll be very famous all of this will happen when you're 12 or 13 years old. She asked me to eat all the chicken, which I did. As soon as the meal was over, I was possessed. Back home, I gave the money back to my mother. My father then told him, the neighbors were right, it was only a test she wanted us to pass. A sorcerer cannot practice witchcraft without being aware of it. Every wizard knows he has this power. And when he meets another wizard, both recognize each other. A true wizard can see through a person as through a transparent water bottle. This is why wizards can play their victims. They can attack them by sending them diseases in any part of their body. Beloved in Christ and dear readers, only the Holy Spirit can protect us from the devil's attacks made by means of wizards. If we do not have Christ, we are at the mercy of such spirits. Like any other evil spirit, the spirit of witchcraft can be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ, if the possessed confesses his sorcery and rejects it with all his heart to accept Christ. First Findings The holidays ended, we left the village. I was only eight years old, and nothing abnormal came to disturb the course of my life. I soon forgot my visit to my grandmother and all the ceremonies that had taken place three years later, I noticed that my life was not the same anymore. I imposed myself among my comrades. I was often the first in the class. Everyone got along with me perfectly, even when I imposed my will. Nobody could refuse me what I wanted to get. As for the boys, they ran after me. The devil can change the external form of our body, in the good and the bad sense. Under the influence of evil spirits, and acting puberty, the shape of my body changed significantly in a positive direction. I became pretty. Already at that age, pretenders were declaring themselves for me. It even happened that respectable people wanted me to become their girlfriend. 
others were waiting for my consent to divorce their wives and remarry me. My parents could register a dozen suitors a day. They presented themselves with gifts my poor father said to them, my daughter is still too young for me to think about marrying her so early. My mother could not believe it. She had grown up girls, however, who were old enough to get married. She was getting sick from seeing so many people stomp on her little girl. It is good for us to be in the Lord. None of those who were not true Christians could resist me. I got everything I wanted from them, without exception. The spirits that were in me captivated people and thus annihilated all their will and ability to resist. I remember the case of an elderly man, an accountant in a big company, who ended up in prison. Here's how, one day when I was coming back from school, I had the ingenious idea of visiting him. When he saw me, he courteously asked me, what is the honor of your visit to me, princess? I'm coming to get some pocket money. Did you take something to put the money? A bag for example? Yes. I emptied my school bag of all its content and handed it to him. Bewitched by my demons, the man, without realizing the seriousness of his act and its consequences, filled my bag with banknotes. This money did not even belong to him. A few days later, I received a note from him, through a colleague. He told me that he was in prison, and asked me for some money to bribe the judges and be released on bail. This accountant was a father. I told him by the messenger, how can you, who have children my age, be ashamed to do something like a girl who is the same age as one of your children? If it ever happens again, I'll talk to my dad. The case ended there. It was more than a scam. I had caused the misfortune of this family. May my God forgive me. From the moment I handed the money to my grandmother and ate her chicken, I signed a pact with Satan to receive the power of domination. Two minds were then placed at my disposal. These spirits attracted to me those who were not in Christ and compelled them to satisfy all my caprices. Chapter 2, The Convent Given the endless ballet of the aspirants who marched home to ask me in marriage, my parents found it preferable to move away. My father decided to send me to the convent. I began to aspire until the end of primary school. At the orientation cycle, I entered the novitiate. After being a postulant for four years, I was consecrated religious. Life at the convent was nothing special. We did not read the Bible. We recited prayers that we have learned by heart. We sang songs contained in songbooks, and that was all. Far from diminishing, my power still increased at the convent. My spiritual father began to teach me how to have sex with a man. My daughter, he said to me, do not be scandalized by what may happen between you and me, it is better that this should happen between us, rather than with pagans or laymen. Haven't you heard that the body had its reasons that reason does not know, you are a great girl to understand what I'm talking about. I made a vow of chastity before God and before men, I would not betray that oath for anything in the world, I am a virgin, what would happen if I became your wife, should I go to confession? You will not need to go to confession. It is not a sin, but the satisfaction of a need of a natural order, it is God himself who created this need. You have pronounced your vows, you cannot let off steam outside the convent. The piety displayed by some nuns is only an outward appearance that the Catholic Church gives to the outside world. I saw sisters killing children. I saw corpses of children buried. Some nuns have even died of cancer from taking contraceptives. Our Creator instituted sexual intercourse between a man and a woman only in the context of marriage. Outside this framework, one commits either adultery, infidelity or fornication, regardless of the quality of the partner. In spite of all the beautiful speeches of the priest, I did not yield to him. I was disgusted by the advanced age of this priest. I was only 16 when he was 50. So that the convents do not empty their borders, this human organization established a system according to which an old spiritual father had to have as a partner a young religious sister, and vice versa. For a young priest who attaches herself to a young nun might be driven by love, abandon orders to found a family elsewhere. My lover. To escape the advances of the old priest, I made friends with another priest, young and handsome. Breaking the orders, I did everything in my power to become intimate with him. We were so connected that we were often seen together everywhere. The old priest told the young man to abandon me, 
but he did not manage to separate us. No agreement being found, the two rivals began to hate each other. It lasted a while. Two camps were formed, those who approved of the young priest, the revolutionaries, and those who were adamant about the regulations, the conservatives. One day there was an exchange of words between the two men who had nothing to do with the catechism, and then they came to blows. A strong fight ensued, to the point where there were burns and serious injuries. The cassocks were burned and torn apart on both sides. However, the young priest got the better of the old man. The next day I was summoned to listen to the report of the judgment pronounced against me. Although not involved in the first degree in the fight, I still expected some reprimands. The old priest was successful and remained at his post. On the other hand, the young man was moved to a distant country. Not being satisfied with the distance of my young lover, I demanded my dismissal from the convent, in protest. My request was rejected for reasons that I cannot explain until now. I made them understand that it was in their interest that I leave. I cannot see my transfer to another convent, I prefer to leave the orders, otherwise, I will get pregnant by the first comer, and I will walk my pregnancy everywhere, being careful to proclaim to whoever wants to hear me where it comes from. Everyone will know that we are not different from free women. They let me go, not without having summoned my mother, to tell her, in my presence, the following, Dear Madam, we thank you for kindly answering our invitation. We wanted to warn you of serious danger. Your daughter, who has been so long in our midst, only now has she made us understand that she does not have a religious vocation, which is why our congregation feels it is good to grant her freedom, but in your presence we would like her to swear to us that she will not disclose the reason for her dismissal, that she will not say anything about what she saw and heard among us for fear of incurring an eternal curse. My sister, what has she done so much to deserve such severity on your part? Madam, what she has done is not worthy of being told here. It is in everyone's interest that I remain silent. In less than a week, your daughter will be able to reach you at home. I was finally allowed to leave the convent, after my veil and other belongings had been trampled, as a sign of a curse in case, I would denounce the secret of the cause of my dismissal, where I remained for six years. Chapter 3, The Countdown Rehabilitation for my new life was painful, after such a long period of doing nothing positive at the convent. Thanks to my diploma, I obtained the place of a teacher in a school in the place. I also pursued university studies. During this period, I met a young student from the University of Lubumbashi named John, this is not his real name, later, I married John. The first years after my marriage was happy. After completing his studies, John was given the position of director of the school. After three maternities, we ended up with four children, including twins, the last ones. The two demons that were in me were still active. Yet my education took precedence over the vagaries of my feelings, and I loved my home. This lasted until the time that had been allotted to these demons came to an end. Those spirits long condemned to serve me yearned for repose. But who could have freed them, since my grandmother, who had bound them, had been dead for a long time? Only Jesus Christ could have set me free, but I did not know him yet. After the disturbances and problems that I had caused, before and after my stay at the convent, I had to pay now. Since I was serving Satan, he was the one who had to charge me. Satan gets paid by sending diseases, torments, all kinds of problems, and even physical death. From that moment, I started having a lot of difficulties in my life. At first, I did not pay attention, hoping they could pass. But in the long run, they accumulated on our family. I am in you. This is how everything started. One day, I went home after school. I had scarcely taken a break when I heard a knock at the door. After opening, I discovered a man dressed in the festive dress of a customary chief. Out of politeness I strayed from the doorway to make room for him and invited him in. He said, I cannot come in, ma'am, since I'm already there. Sorry? Enter the house, since you stand at the door. I have been in you for so long. How can you invite me to come in? I know better than you every corner of this house. What are you saying? Are not you crazy? Do you live in me and you know this house better than me? Who are you? I am not an ordinary being. 
It's been a long time since my body died and buried. Yet I live in you until I can find a better place to go to. With these words, I realized that I was standing in front of a ghost, and I lost consciousness and fell to the ground. The neighbors came running to my house and rushed me to the hospital. The doctors had already discovered in me a whole series of diseases. According to them, I suffered from overwork, hypertension, heart problems, etc. I believed in all the conclusions of the doctors. Grace be with you all that have Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, Amen. Bye for now. Hello everyone thank you for watching our video for today, I trust it blesses your heart. Endeavor to like this video and share it to your loved ones, I pray the grace of the living God will continue to rest upon you and upon everything that pertains to you in the name of Jesus, Amen. If you have any question or comments kindly drop them in the comment section, God bless you. See you in our next video and have a lovely day, bye for now.